Hello, hello, hello. James here and welcome to the James Cast. What are you listening to? You're listening to a fantastic podcast that I've put together with Colin Thomas from some content that we originally aired over on Podaholics, a place where my alter ego lives. What are we talking about here? It's DIY. Colin is hilarious. He's also a DIY expert. How he runs with his colleague Dan, we will fix it in essential maintenance in Dubai. There you go. They're fixing stuff all the time. We're going to be talking about water. We're going to be talking about irrigation. We're going to be talking about tiles. But really, truly, we're just going to be talking about cool projects and things to be thinking about. And along the way, we slip in a little talk about Colin and his dieting. You never know what you're going to get when we have a chat with Colin Thomas. Here we go. This is the James Cast. Uh, yeah, but uh, check it. We'll check out the headphones. We can still keep talking, but let's just check it all out. Oh, yeah, headphones. So, and, and and I find if you you speak, I guess adjust this mic up myself. Really close, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of put my chin, kind of. But yeah, it, well, you'll hear it. I mean, if it's not too loud. Let's see where we go. Oh, there you go. You see? That's, yeah, that's not too bad. So as long as you're close. Yeah, the problem as is soon I have as you to get be far, consistent. Yeah, you have that's to. That's why the mic for me. You, know, you, is you want the, the mic? Winner. I can give you the mic. Do you want the mic? How difficult is it? Oh, it's not hard. If you wouldn't mind, it makes my life a lot easier. Because you might have noticed, James, I also have to kind of sway about as part of my thought process. Which kind of... Um, and also, your mics are so good. They really are. Sorry to be a pain. So who else have you got? You've got Glenn? Glenn's coming in right after you. Oh, fascinating. Well, he's going to have fun because he's, I've just delivered a, um, a Fiat 500 to him with a broken gearbox. So, um, and I've just bought a Range Rover supercharged with a dead engine and a dead suspension. <laughs> non stop. One, two, one, two. Yes, that's more like it. Oh, perfect <laughs> levels as well. Oh, it was, I guess it was on the same levels as the, the other mic, was it? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. See, it's like an old favourite here. It's like an old friend, isn't it? You find your mic and you're like, yes. I like you. I like you very much. <laughs> hey, if, if it's working. Yeah, it is. It's great. Then, then we're good to go. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm ready when you are. Uh, oh, oh, okay. okay. I'll jump right in. And uh, but I, I was just looking at the list here. So we got, we do have a 10 minutes with Colin. Yes. We've got a whole bunch of quick fires. And then on the end, I put in all that, um, the tools explained, the slightly uh, irreverent I, I, view. I can't imagine we'll ever get there. No, well, that was the thought. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 minutes with Colin could be a whole session to oh, be fair. Man. You're, you're so well planned. I, that's what I mean, I, it's just, it very rarely I, happens, you know. I just have Usually this, I send you everything and I just sort of said, we're just going to pick up where we left off. Yeah, but the point was today, because the, we had this whole schedule of being out. Yeah, we weren't I, even going to do today. Yeah, so I had a free schedule this morning. I was sat there twiddling my thumbs going, well, I've got to do something. James, how's my, I'll try the list today. <laughs> Fill it with something. <laughs> Jeez. It's like nobody needs me anymore. Oh, man. I'm, I'm just looking at... Uh, hmm. I'm just looking at your list of everything seems good here and there and stuff. And cool. It's no surprise I only pick the questions that I can actually answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start. Let's do it. Here we go. Potaholics time. It is the We Will Fix It show with Colin Thomas from We Will Fix It Essential Maintenance Dubai. Carved out time from his day. So addicted to podcasting that he's here. And... We're going to be talking about a follow-up on the villa. It's been weeks that we haven't talked about it. Two. <laughs> yeah, but we talked about it for about six. Eight. <laughs> and, we, and we've got 10 minutes with Colin is back. Yay. And a whole bunch more. We're coming to you from the podcast studio at the Rove Hotel downtown in Dubai. Podaholics is the network. The We Will Fix It show is the podcast. And we're doing it. We're on it. We're going. There we go. <laughs> Just start talking. This is, this is the podcast that was never supposed to happen, isn't it? I'm very glad to be here indeed. But today I was supposed to be locked up in yeah. another hotel, unfortunately said. not the Rove, and um, doing all of our planning for both the winter season and all of next year, which uh -huh. is really intense. It's a, it's one of those where you, you come out with a headache at the end oh of the no. day. Oh yeah. No. And then unfortunately, various people started um, uh, falling off the schedule. So I was like, right, stuff this. We're not doing it. 
we'll, we'll delay it for a week. And instead, I get to come and talk to you, the most wonderful therapist I've ever met. <laughs> I, I think Dr. Jenna says that too. We, we have therapy sessions. It's just yes. a conversation. So It kind of feels that way, which is, it's an odd one, isn't it? Because now, what, what is it? It must be four years maybe since we started with Aaron yeah, yeah. Um, together, I guess. Yeah. And um, I do, I really enjoy this. <laughs> it's a really great session. And um, You know what I enjoy I like is, I enjoy the fact that so many of, you know, all of us who are involved are listening to all these podcasts. But I love it that I'll just hear randomly from someone, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I've, I've been listening to the podcast or I've learned so much from this or I've learned what not to do from this. And it's not like when people start listening to these podcasts on Podaholics and they say, oh yeah, well I, you know, I'm listening to Power Works or I'm listening to Tech Talk or I'm listening to We Will Fix It or Doc Talk or Catching Up. They, they tend to just keep listening to them all. They said they all kind of work together and they, they feel like a, addicted to the conversation. It's almost like you've created us here. You know? <laughs> we are now a unit. <laughs> The crazy thing is, do you know who gets the the vote as the most liked podcast by the group here who's podcasting of uh, of us is Glenn. Everyone talks about Glenn's podcast. Not that they don't like yours and not that- How dare they? All of, everyone tends to say, it's it's Glenn's podcast that I just can't get enough of. It's just- it's just That's from our group. It's That's Carl's <laughs> and he, he's extremely dry as well, which I, I really so. like about Glenn. And uh, yeah, I, I just hang out actually at um, uh, PowerWorks. Does he have a good coffee machine? As soon as the coffee no. machine is, see, that's, it's see, not- that is the sticking point uh, every single time I am I not there. Up. But- and I'm, I'm hoping we can get a ladder system put up. Uh, not even 100 meters behind him is the best French baker in the city. Really? Yeah. Well, that's the odd area of town for that. It is because he, he is the guy who supplies all the hotels and stuff. And so if you want to get some of these great baguettes that you then throw into your oven for 15 minutes, this is the guy. And they're those ones you get at the hotels. You go, how did they make these? He's the guy. And you just go in and buy them right from him. His bakery is behind the, the, the shop. That's, that's amazing. Unfortunately, two months ago, right, we would have literally stopped this podcast right there and off I would have gone. But I don't know whether I've told you about this, but I'm on this new yeah. health and accountability thing with Jack yeah. Fawkes. Anyone out there who is looking for a normal personal trainer, I cannot recommend Jack uh, enough. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I don't do personal training with him. <laughs> but what he does is it's like an accountability program where yeah. he we are tracking. So I'm using my fitness so pal. No gluten. Um, gluten is, no, he's not. Uh, Carbs. See, Jack's thing yeah. is um, moderation. Yeah, yeah I know So the things, the things that you like, you can still go for, but balance it out. So what he's after us doing is tracking. So yeah, my yeah. fitness pal, which I resisted for three weeks in a row. And um, yeah, I, it, it's yeah. just, for me, it was almost alien. And finally, two weeks ago, I started doing it. And yeah. now I'm really, really into it. It's working really well. Mm. But it just keeps you on kind of an even well, keel. you got to see. you got to see because you don't realize, oh, yeah, I had a soda. Oh, yeah, I had this thing and it's full of sugar. Oh, yeah, I had that. And, and at the end of the day, what did you eat? Oh, you know. And then you look at it and go, oh. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So he's all about. Um, not necessarily uh, training us in gyms or getting us going super crazy like you'd imagine from personal trainer, but instead to give us the tools to understand what we're doing. That's what mm. he's all about. And it's been fascinating. I've just signed up for another month. It's not even yeah. expensive, bless him. And um, he's, it's been just, just wonderful. But as a result, the thing that I very clearly had a problem with was carbs. It yeah. was insane. Yeah. And bread is just my thing, like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so I've just chopped it out. I've okay. chopped it out pretty much entirely now. Okay. And it's working. It's working mm. really well. So five kilos down in, in a month is decent. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I just need to replicate it because I've still got another 12 kilos to go all right. before I'm at my right weight. All right. And then it's all so, into the moderation world. And it, it's all, it's got to be about moderation yeah. now because otherwise it's just not sustainable. Because we've seen so many people do that. And, and there, we've, we've got a mutual acquaintance your friend, my acquaintance, who we have seen do this, and I'm not going to say his name. Uh, I okay, know, yes, I know exactly what you mean. But, yep. you know, did the life diets come in the bag, and, yep. and, and he lost an extraordinary amount of weight. I, and I, I mean, he looked amazing. Yep. Then he got off that, and put it on with a few extra and, and he he's the first person to admit it like yeah, I'm yeah, not, he is but and that's the always the the key is okay you get on to the life planning like you're doing yep so you can sustain it so this is and it's a life plan so now yes. it becomes you know yeah i'd love to have a baguette you know you can have a piece yep you can't have a whole one 
Yes. And, and away you go. See, that's the thing. And um, I've been down really low. I mean, low for me. I, I was down at 92. Wow. I think when I started this, I was at 117, currently at 112. And uh, what I've worked out is my, my happy number's bang on 100. There you go. That's what, that should be sustainable mm. and, um, and healthy. And, you know, bottom line, we're, we're dancing. Mm. I'm, I'm, you know, a dad's <laughs> two young kids and, yeah. and I still want to be around. I still want to be yeah. a bit more active than I am. So that's where, well, that's gone, which is very maintenance related, <laughs> isn't it? James, look hey, what we've done inside the first five minutes. <laughs> well, you know what? We want to pick up with the whole move and we want to jump right into 10 minutes with Colin Great. because this is an extraordinary part of the show. 10 minutes with Colin. Good going, even having that available, considering uh, literally two hours ago, you didn't even know I was coming. I'm hugely proud of you. Well done, you. So, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about um, what happens post-move-in. And I'm not actually talking necessarily about all the things that you planned. This is more more about the unplanned elements that happen pretty much only when you've turned the D were on. Okay? Mm. Now... If you imagine when we went round our place, we were a little bit desperate, as you know, because yeah. I was kind of three weeks from being homeless. Yep. But looking at it on the surface, even with my eye, there's some really obvious stuff. But generally speaking, it was a cared for property, an mm. older property. You know, it's probably 15 years old now, I guess. And it, the, what was just amazing was the number of hidden things that we found and the effects that those actually have. It was things like, so starting off with water, so I could see from the front garden that we had a row of like water spots, Mm-mm. which was underneath gravel. So it wasn't it wasn't watering anything. Yeah. And I could see that they were there, and I, and they'd obviously been there for quite a while because it was a different colour and a permanent <laughs> different colour. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, I got my plumbers to have a quick look at that, and what they basically said was, your entire irrigation system is totally. Not mm. working correctly. There we go. I that was a nice pause. I, I like that I, sanitization. It was, yeah, I was trying not to use <laughs> There was the, a one word you could have used. <laughs> yes. So, um, and what they basically said to that was, the, whoever was living here before was literally losing a fortune. It could well have been like 500, 600 dirhams a month worth of wow. leak. Wow. Because the main um, valve, the main irrigation valve, the solenoid valve, was... Uh, leaking so that 24 hours a day you had a leak going into the irrigation mm. system. It wasn't something that only leaked when the irrigation was so on. It's always leaking. Yeah, but it's under- no. underground. They hadn't spotted the um, the the indicators. And, Do you think they just hadn't been looking because they'd lived there for a long time? So they just they just grown accustomed to. Oh yeah, that's a different color, and it happened over time. And I think with these people that bless them, they, I just don't think they had the level of knowledge that they needed. Okay. Uh, interesting enough, now they use we will fix it at a new place. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a bit of an introduction. For you. Um, but they just didn't know. They didn't know to look. Okay. And then they, we looked at the uh, the water tank. All standard things that we would we would do, especially yeah. when we start an essential annual contract. Because uh, if we don't find it at the beginning, we're paying for it with free labour later on. Yeah. So we look very carefully. And uh, which there, is maybe a, a great. It's almost like you, you know, if you're moving, maybe get the essential maintenance guys to come by because it gives you a little bit of a house inspection. And obviously, you're going to need some maintenance anyway. So absolutely. I mean, mm. the whole point is to get the house right. Uh, yeah. for coming onto a contract. So we will find everything um, that's an issue. And with this one, again, the, the place that I moved to also had a leak on the joint leading to the ball oh. cock uh, on the tank as well. So again, more wastage. Probably, they're probably only about 100, 150 dirhams a month on wow. that. They'd lived there for four years. Wow. So again, that needed to be uh, done. This was stuff that I did, we did in the first couple of days or so. Um, there were some real unfortunate ones as well. So my boys obviously went through all the AC systems like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Now, something that happens in maintenance that most maintenance companies don't talk about is almost that sod's law scenario, which is when you do absolutely everything correct and it doesn't always work out as planned. Uh. Five days in, two o'clock in the morning, a whack from a better half, Natalie, uh, saying... It's hot. The AC's broken. It's all your fault. Okay? I could have happily slept through till the morning. I really wasn't that bothered, right? However... No, no there needs to be an asterisk here. You keep your, your your room at about 16 degrees Celsius. Baltic. She yeah. starts complaining at 16, actually. It's around 14.5 on the indicator, which is just insane. And yes, poor air conditioning. Poor air conditioning. I, I feel for it on a nightly basis, you know? Things it has to do. So uh, it it had blown both a capacitor and then also a compressor 
wire and as you'd, well. But you'd already done everything the servicing. We'd gone right the way okay. through it. Mm. It hadn't been missed. It was just literally one of those things where finally when the jolt from the, um, the capacitor went to the compressor, it was just enough to frazzle it. Wow. It was just one of those things. And again, not actually that difficult to replace, just frustrating mm. uh, that needed doing. Luckily, we went through to the uh, the guest bedroom, which we just constructed the bed in a couple of days before, and uh, managed to sleep there for the night, along with the dog, bless him. <laughs> who was but that's not five days wiser. after. I mean, it's five days. You, you would think as the, the repair company and you know the, the maintenance company, you've done it five days, everything is set, and then you get the yeah. phone call. Airy, AC's out. You, what did you guys do? Exactly. <sighs> and it's really frustrating. As a, as a business owner, it's really frustrating because you'll create that negative experience. Yeah, yeah. But what we're dealing with is a 15-year-old AC in all reality. And unfortunately, things are going to break. Hardware's going to break. And it's not mm. always detectable. Loads we can detect, but there is the odd thing that you're just going to be unlucky with. And that's one of these. And again, actually, in this circumstance, if it had been uh, something that was service-related, we warranty it. So yeah. if it had been a customer, actually, because it was a hardware fault, we can't warranty that hardware unless we've replaced it, but we would have been out there immediately to mm. um, to go and have another look. So that was unfortunate. The, the other piece you want to talk about is is the, 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 the pan that collects the water. Yeah, so I saw this as soon as I walked in, which was there was a couple of bowed ceilings downstairs with obvious watermarks that uh -uh. They, they said, oh, yes, and we fixed that. And I looked at it and I went, that water is within a week. That's not fixed. Whatever you've been told, that's not fixed. So day one, I mean, I mentioned that we had just had an army. I think I had five teams on day one that were looking at it. And um, that one was just an alignment issue. So if you wow. imagine with the pan, so there's lots of water coming off the condenser coil, uh, which is condensate, so condensation. And basically, it all needs to flow into the one corner to get down the waste pipe and out. If it's even like a few millimetres out in terms of the, the runoff, it's not going to run in the right direction. Really? And instead, when it hits, it bounces in the wrong direction, builds up, and at that point, it will overflow. And again, this one was right on kind of horizontal a little bit more. So then when, if you imagine over the last month or so, we had quite a lot of humidity. Yeah, yeah. And so the amount of water increases at that stage. It was just too much for the pan to handle. Is there anything that you know, the, the homeowner can do to help keep that little drain open it's is there anything or not really well if you imagine you're, you're working there with um a, com a combination of water and electricity yeah well that's what i was thinking it's like yeah. i don't want to be up there i don't want to even be poking around in that blower that's the issue uh, so technically yes could they could somebody do it yes would we advise it no and not just because i'm a maintenance company we just like to keep people alive yeah so on that basis it, it's one of those where regular servicing um would would sort that out on the whole again any company that services should offer a warranty so if it mm. happens soon after or you know for us we offer a three-month warranty yeah. the assumption is that every four months really an ac should on average be, be serviced so there's not really that long a period for it to go wrong the way they, they wouldn't be covered in that situation so uh, we've got that we've got uh, we spoke about tiles as well we yeah. have more pop this week oh no i know luckily it's the same area that we plan to um replace but they physically popped as in like five centimeters up on one side why feet. why why would they do that so again it's air pockets that from the original time i mean we can see how bad the original tiler was they yeah. used like half the amount of um tile glue that they're supposed to they left big gaps that become air pockets airs trapped and if you imagine um as the temperature goes up and down that expands contracts expands and contracts over 15 years of that it gets to the stage where it will physically pop the tile which uh. is exactly what's happened here i have have found another two areas that aren't as bad but i'm gonna to have to get those lifted up and then uh, relayed again um in the house so the tiles are going to be an ongoing battle i think there'll be an ongoing battle for the whole time that we're in the property what, what's the the option rip everything up and relay everything no what okay. i'm doing is i've got one area which is kind of our dining area at the bottom where we've already taken up 20 tiles they were so badly adhered in the first place we didn't actually break any wow so now that same area where it's gone again what we'll do is we'll lift that entire area and try and save as many tiles as we can mm. uh, for the simple reason you can't get the tiles anymore. Yeah. We'll then redo that area, uh, which is probably, what, five, probably five, 
no less than that, probably about 30 square meters, I thought, which isn't too dramatic in terms of cost. And then use those tiles in all the other areas to basically repatch as we lift in case we break, which is going to happen, right? yeah. break tiles as we go. So hopefully, it, I can't see any other dodgy areas. And before you even get to, to where we're at, as you're walking, especially if you've got a dog, yeah. my goodness, <laughs> Rollo's brilliant at this. <laughs> tap, 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 tap hollow, 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 you hear as he walks over things. Yeah. So you're like, oh, where's he just walked? Right, that one's a dodgy one as well. So I've got tape out now, which is when Rollo walks over a tile, it's dodgy. <laughs> tape it, you know? If only we could do that as an automatic dispenser. Yeah. Maybe tie it to the remains of his tail and away we go. That'd be brilliant. But, oh, um, so that's, that's going to solve the kind of tile issue as well. And these are all moving things, like things that you, you didn't necessarily know that were suspect before you got into the place. Definitely the water stuff, definitely the unexpected failures on the AC. Um, obviously, I knew about the uh, the ceilings and the um, the drain pans. That was yeah. fine. Um, but it's uh, oh, the one, another one I didn't know was some of the, over the years, do you remember when everybody used his satellite dishes? Yeah. I've still got three on my roof for some reason. <laughs> and I, I'll take those down over the winter when we've got some time. And there's cables that are just, they just threw the cable from the roof down and then it turns out that they actually put them through the same sockets that were designed for internet just ripped out the internet wires really yeah so yeah. i've got an ace guy my um one of my electricians is just brilliant at, at cable pulling it sounds simple it really really isn't it's it's a black art but bless him he's already done uh, one double uh, data socket for me and uh, i just found another one last week it's behind the cupboard i'm like oh come on you must be kidding me so i'm going to do another one there um and then hopefully at that point i can um, i can redo my um uh, my internet so at the moment my mesh system is kind of linking to each other for where we've got the data cables rather than actually going data to the yeah. wall which which would be faster. So we'll get that done over the winter, I think, and um, and that way I should have um, blistering fast internet everywhere. Okay. So that's exactly what you need. Yeah. Mm, yeah, consistency. Mm, mm. So, you know, what, what I really want um, people as a takeout from this to think about is you need to understand that in Dubai, every property, whether new or old, really is working its absolute hardest during the summer period especially. But generally speaking, it's a harsh environment that we're in here. So you are going to have more problems than when you were back in either the UK or uh, wherever you're from. So, And that's just part of it. You know, they, they, they're good properties still. Everyone yeah. likes to slag off wherever they're staying but really most places in Dubai are good properties but they just need to have a lot of maintenance to keep them going and also if you are moving you need to just bear in mind that there's a heck of a lot more that's going to be required on top of what you've already seen so you need to plan for that both from a budget perspective and time as well there we go that's what we call 10 minutes with colin <laughs> Has it ever been 10 minutes? <laughs> no. No, I, I just, I'm like, I think I've gone. I had one where I was like, right, this week, I'm going to keep it to 10 minutes. And I think I did about four. And then you have the other ones that are like half an hour and I'm still bleating yeah. on. I'm like, that's not 10 minutes. I got to share this one. We had a, a friend move into a new apartment building just over the way yeah. from where we're recording over here at the Rove downtown in the podcast studio, by the way. Great podcast and, studio. And they're, they're in there and they're beautiful building. You know, I've only seen pictures and, and you know, their, their place looks beautiful. Yeah. They say, yeah, it's exactly what you're talking about. Two days in, they don't have a water leak. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, you know, they call in the, it's still under warranty, right? So the, the, the builder comes back with, with a crew and they say, oh yeah, you're right. The water, they, and there's a spot on the ceiling, but it's, it's like, I'm, we're, we're sitting here in the podcast studio looking up at the ceiling. Well, it is a solid sheet on this ceiling, much like theirs. It's not tiles, it's chip rock or plasterboard, yeah. whatever you, wherever you're from, however you want to call it. Canada, we'd call it chip rock. And yeah. I think chip rock's actually a brand. I think you're right. So, you know, you've got the plasterboard. So they, they look up and they say, well, it's in this corner. We're going to go tear up the, the little corner to get at it. And they do tear up the corner and they realize that's not where it is. <laughs> it's yeah. traveled. Yeah. And they, she sends me pictures of their entire living room covered in plastic and the guy and she's taking a video of the guys pulling down all of the plasterboard from the ceiling to try and find the leak lovely and i don't actually know if they did find it i, I suspect they did because i never got a follow-up but it it looked to me like a it's a, a complete work zone 
Do you know, it's an interesting one, that, and it's a, a real apartment thing, but quite often that's not a leak. Really? Yeah. What actually happens there is, if you imagine uh, the way that uh, an apartment building is, is built, so you've got the slabs, in effect, on all mm-hmm. the different levels. Also, because of um, the way that an apartment building works, they have a real problem with air pressure in the different locations. So what they have to do is basically put fresh air um, inlets that go into every apartment so that when you open the door... All right, so you don't get that... Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But the problem is, if those go don't go through a fresh air handling unit, which oh. are the bit that normally people might want to save a bit of cash on if you're running a building... Then you what, have the what is that? Is that like literally a it's, box? That's it's like an AC unit. Oh, effect, okay. But its job is to uh, so it's pulling chill, it in. chill down the oh, air okay. to, to the level before it comes into the building. Uh, and naturally, as part of that process, it would take out the humidity because yeah. an AC has like a dehumidifier. Imagine that that's not working fully. Uh-oh. Okay. So what then happens is the air comes in in the same way uh, into the location, but it's humid. It then hits the cold slab, because obviously the uh, the concrete will be cooler than the main building around yeah. it. It hits the slab, and at that point, it, it creates condensation. That oh. condensation then drips down onto the gypsum roof. Quite often you see it coming through light fixtures. That's uh-huh. the classic. And basically, you think that you've got a leak, whereas actually you've just got a huge amount of condensation. How, how do you know if it's one or the other? Like how do- Experience. Okay. Uh, these days, and kind of look at it and go, yeah, no, there shouldn't be any any waste pipe. But if you imagine in your um, your friend's situation, when they did the initial exploratory, they should be pretty confident that they can stick their head in the ceiling to see what pipe work is about, yeah. which then tells you whether or not you've got a leak location or you haven't. Mm. Also, there's telltales, or there should be loads of telltales. You get like little brown marks on the um, uh, on the underside of the slab. Uh, which tell you where the drips have been in the past, even if they're not there at that time. And that gives you a really good indication that you've got oh, a condensation yeah. issue rather than anything else. If you've got a condensation issue, what do you do? Because if your building doesn't, you know, you say to the building, hey, guys, the intake, clearly we've got a problem here. And they go, beyond yeah. us. What can I do as an apartment owner or a condo owner? It's a difficult one. Um, the the bodge which I, i'm not sure i've got anything that's particularly better is to um block up with expandable foam those fresh airports it's not recommended because again mm. traditionally if you were in a property that was really well sealed you would not want to do that a for fresh air and oxygen levels and all that kind of stuff um and secondly you will then get that whole whoosh if yeah. you got if you got all of the fresh air um that's where where the issues were Traditionally in Dubai, our ceiling is not something that you would ever consider to be remotely airtight. So you, you tend to have less of an issue from that perspective. But again, it's not something that would be recommended. Oh, Other one, extractors. Leave your extractors on. Um, so that way you're creating circulation within these spaces. That can help to a degree. But again, it's not, it's not great. And you get noise too, I guess, with an extractor. More to it. You're paying the fees oh, yeah. to the building owner for maintenance of the property. So... I would like to see when your fresh air handling unit was last inspected and can you confirm that it's fully working? If you can, can I send my my AC guy to take a look with your guy to yeah. make sure that you're not telling me a porky pie? That would be the way I'd probably take go oh, at it. Man. Okay. Yeah, well, it's not an easy one, is it? Yeah, no, not at all. We'll see where that goes. Yeah. I, I wanted to follow up on your, your fence building because you had to make some choices you had a wooden fence yeah you went for an aluminum fence i did go aluminum in the end yes could have aluminum. just aluminum well I, i've suddenly gone <laughs> north american yeah, you, you, aluminium <laughs> yes okay i do apologize <laughs> sorry you, brits you 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 could have gone composite you could have gone yes. chain link. You yes. could have gone with another wooden fence. Yep. Why the choice? Simple, actually. It was the fence that I was putting in was like a utility one um, to stop the dog eating all of the electrical <laughs> box, the swimming pool, <laughs> little underhand area, which he absolutely loved doing for the first couple of weeks. And it's round the side of the house, so that way it's not really that visible. So I went for the option that would be uh, require the least maintenance and um, the maximum structural strength. Simple as that. Uh, and as it turns out, you know, the one the one kind of irritance is 
Fences don't really do all that much, but yeah. they're not cheap. <laughs> no, you know? they're hugely expensive. Yeah, like, I know. I mean, it, it, and it's less so here maybe than in some other parts of the world, simply because you don't have to worry about frost. Yes. And, and the movement that happens from the ground. I mean, if you look at the way they construct villas, yeah. you know, they just dig down five feet, pour a slab and build on top of it. Yeah. You know, th- there's no pilings for typically for villas, apartments, of course, there's pilings, yeah. but that's a little bit different than some of the construction and well, fence is the same thing. Yeah, it is. But then you also think about in in kind of a lot of the Western places, you have standard fence panels that, that oh, you, are produced in, in, yeah. in bulk and therefore your can price can drop down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas here, everything's bespoke. But why? So uh, hold on a second. Why wouldn't there be standard... I mean, we, we, we have concrete things that are being built for buildings prefab. Yeah. Why isn't someone doing prefab fences and saying, hey, you know what? Arabian ranches, we know that there's there's certain sizes, certain things. We can produce fences that'll pass all the spec. They're perfect. They're built in the shop so that they're kiln dried or, you know, done in an environment so that when we put them in, they just live like they were intended to. Simple one, I think, which is economies of scale. Yeah, okay. And also holding stock here, which people really don't want to do. Yeah. And um, and as a result, even even in the ranches, I don't think you've got much consistency either. Yeah. So I totally it must get look it. like a real dog's breakfast then. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just put it in. How dare you, James? It's not How yours. Dare. The fact that there's so much. To, to, so yes, they do. You're yeah. absolutely right. There's no consistency and then, when you're then, around then, the places. Like you said, someone who's decided, oh man, there's, this is just a utility fence, so I'm going to go with the cheapest possible option. <laughs> And building supplies. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. No. Yeah. So basically, we wanted like a flat panel. Yeah. Um, the boss decided it would be white rather than beige. Uh-huh. Which for me, beige was obvious. We've got beige walls, we've got a beige uh, house. Yeah. I, I could have told you she would have gone white. I could have told you. but she was right. I hate that. <laughs> because it looks, now it you looks know, quite good. You know what's coming next? Your, your, your patio furniture is also going to be white very soon. She tried that. <laughs> I refused point blank. <laughs> She did try that, James. Oh my God, you're more suited to being with my wife than I am, I think. Um, it's an obvious one, which is, I get it with powder coating. Powder coating's yeah. fine, but then whatever... What's powder coating? Uh, powder coating, so metal metal oh, okay. finish where yeah. um, instead of it being sprayed, yeah. well, it is actually sprayed, but it's sprayed with the powder and then baked, so that oh. way it's a really hard um, finish. Yeah. In fact, these, these are powder coated. Okay, so the, yeah. we're looking at the, so, the arms that oh, are yes. holding up the mics. Apologies, I forgot we were doing a <laughs> podcast there for a second. Um, and, and basically, they, uh, it's a really, really strong finish. Okay. But the problem is that you need some kind of material to mm. sit on. Well, that will degrade. And if it's white in any shape or form, yeah. then at that point, it's going to go brown. It's a yeah. reality. And uh, I know, Natalie, she's going white. She wants white, white, <laughs> white, 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 white. So on that basis, I said, no, I've just done the teak furniture on that basis. We're sticking with it, um, and you can do white accents wherever you think white is required. All right, so we'll go down that route. So why wouldn't you just go with a nice big chain link fence anyway? Because they look terrible, James. But you can what put those. You can put that, you, that weave through it, right? It's uh, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So we, we wanted actually a, a kind of a flat panel. So yeah. although it's aluminium, the, the style of it is very much like that traditional fence that your dad yeah. put together uh-huh. with the, you know, flat plank style. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. That's great. Uh, how did you anchor the fence posts and all that kind of stuff? Did you pull Just out the old ones? In. Pull out the old ones and put new ones in? Interestingly enough, no, we put it in a different place. Oh. So there was, there was already, it was almost like designed for it. There was a whole um, cast concrete um lip that was just a step previously and it was just perfectly arranged for for that to go in and luckily it was in front of the old damaged fence yeah. so winter hopefully if we get a bit of downtime i'll bring the guys in just to actually that nothing now wants that repaired as well which i haven't fully understood <laughs> just got you a new one why do you want the old one repaired but anyway we'll, we will repair it i'm not going to argue on that one got bigger fish to fry and uh, <laughs> we'll put that one back um and hopefully we'll then have the two fences that every house needs within six feet of each other <laughs> <laughs> Just that out. Honestly, this this podcast is almost like the, uh, the the guide to married life. If you really don't want to be in the doghouse, I don't, I don't get the two fences though; they're so close together. Okay, this yeah. I actually I do know the logic. I'm being slightly flippant. <laughs> Apparently, she wants that to be where we're going to put the washing. Ah, right? okay. But still, I don't get why we therefore need a, a, the back fence. Because in effect, you come through the one where you can't see anyway, because it's, yeah. it's, it's a fence. However, apparently we need the back one as well. Mm. So that, that area is 
just for washing. Oh, okay, so you could have people over and you could have your laundry hanging and don't have to worry about people seeing your knickers. No, but you won't see that anyway. There's, there's that white <laughs> fence that I've just paid stupid amounts for in front of it, James. What, what, what about the composite idea? I mean, there's, everyone's selling composite see, product. I'm a big fan of composite. Interesting enough, I did have a little bit of a problem with the composite that um, we had in the last place. Oh. So I got composite and I got it done by a, a supplier I use frequently. And they said, don't go to Dragomart. Don't go to yeah, Dragomart. Yeah. And I was hearing them and, you know, you know how I am about Dragomart. Yeah, yeah. So we went with their, their products and they fitted it beautifully. In fact, this mm. was on um, both the uh, the ground area and the extension that we had um, for the container pergola that I did. Uh, we had it all the way as You're a You're getting another one of those though, right? doing something slightly different on that one, which we can talk about at some stage. Um, and uh, it basically, over time, it both warped I've noticed and that. shrunk. I've noticed that with the composites, and I thought that's really interesting. Well, the odd thing was, about six months later, brother-in-law Elliot, were at his place, which is stunning in the ranch, it's had the same to, um, scenario to do. And he looked at mine, and quite rightly, we both looked at it and went, hmm, no, I probably wouldn't do that again. Mind you, I did, uh, in exactly this intervening period, the six-month period, I got Dan to do his in it, and also the mother-in-laws with the, the stuff and the supply when it was all looking fine. Yeah. And unfortunately, they've got ongoing repairs that are happening for them. But he did his with Drug and Mart Special. Huh. Perfect. Three years later, well, two and a half years, I guess. Perfect. No issues mm. at all. So, I don't know whether or not there are varying qualities there. They all look very, very similar indeed, yeah. as if they're coming from the same supplier. But, touch wood, if they are the same as brother-in-law Elliot had, they were a good bet. So, I'm going to go down that route this time. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to see whether or not um, the, the Dragon Mart route will work. Because it's worked for pavers. My pavers have been absolutely wonderful so mm. far. So working, like, working with the composite is kind of like working with wood, but it's plastic, right? Yeah, so it's, a, it's basically a plasticized, it's got wood fiber in it uh -huh. as well. Um, but it is, it's, it's formed in effect, yeah. so extruded, I guess. It'd be the and some of those get so hot though, and when it's hot here. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, you think about it, and if it's, if it's going to be too hot for feet um, with composite, what else are you going to use? Stone? Yeah, exactly. yep, still going to be hot or uh, wood, in which case it's going to degrade that quick. You won't be able to walk on it anyway. Yeah. So you kind of, you know, we're just dealing with the climates here. I think the wonderful thing about the composite is you don't get splinters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a real winner, without a doubt. But I'm thinking, in fact, we haven't, we haven't arranged this bit yet, but I'm thinking we're going to need some kind of cover over the top of it anyway. Mm. Um, but we've got that much cover and other projects going on right now mm. in that garden. I mean, it's just... I sent it to you. It looks like a war zone. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, the, I mean, the guys are working really quickly through it, but we've got some like 140 square meters that we need to cover Huge. with either pavers or um, or with composite. So um, actually that is tomorrow's trip to go and get that worked <laughs> out. Because the guys are apparently we are doing, well, we were doing the concrete pour tomorrow. I think now it's going to be Thursday and they'll need a couple of days. So by Sunday, Monday, they'll be on, I think about 100, 100 square meters of, granite that needs to go down wow. as the next step and then after that we'll put the composite down after that will be pergola after pergola is around the side of the house to a um kind of a, a, a play area it's going to be a, a combination of um probably a table tennis table and then we might just try and get one of those outdoor football um type tables as well nice. that's the plan if I don't run out of money, which seems highly likely. So I need to get trading some Pajeros and quickly. I, I've, I've seen a lot of people with sunshades that are floppy. Yeah. What is, is that the sunshade do you think is stretched as it, they need to, what, what does someone do when they've got the floppy sunshade, which is just going to start flapping like it's going to go. You really know when the wind hits it, yeah. you've got a floppy sunshade. You're going to hear it through your house and yeah. then eventually it's going to break and it's going to annoy you because it'll be flopping at night when you're trying to sleep. Yes. So a couple of different scenarios on that. If you've got, the first one is if you've bought the cheapest of cheap sunshades, you're just in trouble. It is going to stretch. It's <laughs> okay. going to keep going. And that's, um, and that's the reason not to necessarily get the cheapest of cheap sunshades yes. because they stretch. Yeah. But literally for 10% more here, the budget brand to go for is Coolaroo. Okay, cool. And room. Um, yeah, they're, they're available at most of the retailers. A sell them, Speedex sell them as well. And I've, I've got a Coolaroo that probably must be 12 years old now, I guess. Really? Still brilliant. Absolutely wow. fantastic. I haven't got it up at the moment, but I need to sort that one out at some point. 
And um, they still will stretch to a degree, but they've just been, you know, in the areas where they are going to stretch, they literally double weave it. So okay. you, you've got the, the, the structure there. And it's, you can imagine in 12 years, it's been through most things now and come out the other side. Um, but basically, a couple of things. Turnbuckles. So um, these are yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically expansion, uh, what do you call it? Like an, uh, it's ex- like a hook with a, yeah. a U-piece in it where the screw goes in the middle and then you turn them. Excellent. There we go. So Good you want to have those on, on the three points as opposed to going directly onto the hooks? People have different ways of doing this. If it's me on a triangle, I would definitely do the two the two uh, top ones normally. Uh, so you then have one point. So you're pulling in one direction. Yeah. You've got the ability to pull equally. Mm. Uh, or if it stretches in a particular direction, depends on which one you would actually tighten more. So you can do it that way. That is the sensible way of doing it. Um, if you've got a rectangle, do two. Don't do four. Okay. So that way you've always got to stretch in one direction to get it yeah. all straight. So down you want to stretch in one direction. Yeah. That's tip. That's the, the pro tip, first yeah. of all. The, the other, the cheap way of doing it as well is um, if you bought, if you decided to use rope rather than uh, wire, does uh, anyone chain? Do, do, do people it. use rope? Yeah, loads of so. people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Right. Um, then you can, if you've got more left over, which to be fair in our household, um, I have a lot of <laughs> rope left over. <laughs> then what I tend to do is I tend to just um, put an additional rope in to retention mm. that corner if I'm out of turnbuckle um, uh, tightening ability mm. and then i will literally just kind of uh, do like a four or five uh, oh, roots okay. and i've got some leverage on it tighten the whole thing up hold it temporarily yeah. Yeah. undo the original one and then tighten that to the same level so i've still got something that looks good rather than the cheap bit of rope that i had available okay. and i've tensioned it retensioned it that way once i've let off that turnbuckle again sounds so like a lot of way, work why wouldn't i just use chain well Chain, yes, but it is more difficult to install. So it takes mm. longer and um, it, it can be a little bit of a pain. Also, chain here is not necessarily all that good. You get quite what? a lot of GI chain uh, that rusts over time. Really? So it can look pretty rubbish. Mm. So you need to buy a good quality chain if you're going to go down that route. So you, you recommend using the rope versus... No, no, no. no. Yeah. You, you basically, if you're going to get somebody... Either, if, you, if you're good at DIY, then you're yeah. fine with a chain. It's absolutely fine. But then at that point, probably an angle grinder as well to be able to cut the chain at the length yeah. that you need. Um, or So you get to buy some tools. That's a, yes. uh, that's a, pl- that's a plus. Yeah. Or again, wire is a good one yeah. to use as okay. well if you're, if you're comfortable using that. Uh, but again, a bit of specialist equipment required to get it cut. And uh, you need to know what you're doing, but nothing a YouTube video can solve. <laughs> can you buy these at uh, Dragon Mart? Are they selling the... No. Uh, yeah. Speedex is the best for that. And okay. Ace have it as well, but Coolaroo though. And you said Coolaroo. Coolaroo is great brand. Yeah, yeah, durability. Yeah, really good brand. Australian brand, I guess? Uh, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah it sounds like kangaroo, kangaroo, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they do struggle, actually. The main colour that you want, generally, is that sand colour. That's isn't a, it? Yeah, that's one I see often. Yeah. And blue. They've been, out of, they've been out of stock of that for a long, old Ooh. while. So... If you see it, jump on it. And again, Dubizla is really good for second-hand ones, but make sure it's a cooler room. It will always be stitched in. Uh, so they then they don't fail. Uh, <laughs> so on that basis, if you haven't got a cooler room sticker, it isn't a cooler room. Ignore what people say. Mm, you know, I've, I've been thinking I need to get one of these sunshades. Uh, actually, you know what? We've got, I've got a, uh, well, an awning. That yes. we a secondhand awning that we've had, you know, it, it probably lived with its original owner for a good five years. We've had it for ten. Great. And, and the stitching, uh, and this is this is not a, you know, the cooler room material mm. or that. This is you know, this is good old canvas. Yeah. This yeah. is an old school one. The stitching on the canvas is starting to come apart. So I've patched it, but I need to get some folks in. And, and it's funny because I'm looking at it and it's got the, it's got the brand on it, yep. who they are. And, and I'm wondering, it's, it's silly because it, it's sort of working and I'm, you know, I, I don't play with it a lot, so it's nice and it does its job, but I, I, I probably need to get it repaired, yeah. but I'm worried about getting it repaired. And then because it's such an old system that <laughs> if they start messing around with it, this yeah. is going to go with it. That's going to go with it. This is going to go with it. And, and so that's my first worry. My second worry is, do I go and, and pick up the phone and call the people who it appears it came from? Mm. Or go to one of the other sunshade people that are, you know, there's, it's a pretty standard operating mechanism. You know what they're going to do, though? It's another one. <laughs> yeah. You've got a chance with the original one if they're still around. Yeah. But if you go to somebody else, oh, no, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Mr. Michael. No, 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 no. What you need is Spanky. And Spanky costs you 20,000 dirhams. 
Yeah, thanks so much. You know, and it was it was so cool when we got this thing because it was literally a friend of ours said, "Look, we got three of them. We got three friends. Each of you can have one." Oh, lovely! And and I'm lo- sort of looking at it going, "Where am I going to put this?" And so in our in the back of our place, we've got a couple of columns that go up, and there's a balcony. Oh, lovely! And the space, without even knowing, is exactly where this Get thing it. is. So when we put it in, you know, we got the ladders, had the, you know, the buddies come over yeah. and we were, you know, good quality and we're drilling in because you want to make sure that you got it anchored. Yes. If a piece of the concrete doesn't fall off, Please, <laughs> we Lord. fixed it. It was okay. Oh. But so this thing has been there ever since. And, you know, you wind it in, you wind it out, yeah. but it's beautiful, but it's showing the age of getting sun on it. And so got to I think you should be able to get that one sorted. Yeah. You know, there's something about old, old necks as well that I just yeah. love. Yeah. It really is great. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, we, we could still got lots of stuff on the list here. I'm looking through it. Stuff. It's like, holy moly. It's, it's crazy. Take your pick. I mean, literally, I, I did a quick potpourri of everything that we've ever done. You know? <laughs> so it seemed like a, um, a nice opportunity to, to bring some of the old stuff back. What are you thinking on? Well, you know, I'm all, I'm always a big fan of uh, water pumps, but and we have talked a little bit about ducts, but maybe we we want to we want to jump back in there for just a second. Actually, there's a different there's a different angle on this actually, which is this this particular question, um, which which was sun and pipe degrading in the open sun. What can be done? Yeah. The first thing is to spot what you've got, okay. and w- if you really got degrading pipe. Yeah, absolutely. So if your pipe is like uh, grey. Yeah. When it was originally fitted, it would have been dark grey. If it's like light grey and almost white, then look to see, okay, is this pipe still the same shape that it would have been when it was originally produced? Or does it have any kind of degradation on it at uh. all? If it does, then at that point, you definitely need to get it looked at because it's going to blow. Okay. It's just a question of when. It started to change shape. And that's UPVC pipe. Mm. Conversely, if your pipe is green or was green, but has now gone white, don't worry about it. Yeah. That's, okay. P- so, that's PPR. See, I've got some of that up on the roof. And every time I go up there and I take a look around, because, you know, you got to inspect stuff. Yeah, make yeah. sure. And that's exactly what it is. And I take a look. And, and I even said to the guys one time when they came, I said, what do you think of this stuff? They said, don't touch it. Yeah. Leave it. The reason is it's really thick, first of all, but yeah. also it's a much higher quality material. So it, it might look like that on the outside. Inside, it's like brand new. And you don't is, need to worry about it. This started to become the time of year where you can see your, if you got any leaks from your roof or stuff because it was so hot. So if you had your water tank and it was leaking or the pipes leaking or the joints leaking. In fact, I had one the other day. I come down, I come down, I look down, I, I see some water coming off the roof and I'm going, didn't rain. <laughs> <laughs> So I crawl up onto the roof and I'm looking, I'm looking to see where this is. And I'm going, you can't be serious. You know, that's all I'm saying. Is Did I'm you do it proper John McEnroe? <laughs> you cannot <laughs> be serious. I, I, I waited till I got on the roof to see if it was something I was going to have to be angry about. Ah. And I just took a look and I said, oh, and, and it's funny because it was going, it was coming it was the, the water going into the tank on the roof. Yep. And so you've got that ball thing. Yeah. And, the, and, and I'm looking at where there's a little bit of a leak. And so I, I just simply turned the pipe and I'm go, it, it had loosened off. And so there is, a, it, for whatever, you know, wow. they tightened it on. So union joints are where yeah, the union there's a joints. collar. Yeah, there's a yeah. collar. Oh, God, you were lucky. And that's what I said too, because I thought, oh no. So I thought, I see where it is. So I just turned it and it, and it just needed another little turn. And then it was okay. And I thought, you wow. are the wow. god of maintenance. <laughs> I thought, wow. This yeah. is, I was very lucky. You I thought, were very lucky. Because I was looking going, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. No. That's a painful yeah. one, that. Yeah. I, I give that a one in 10 chance of actually coming off when you did it. I, I'm keeping my eye on it, though. And this is the thing, because I live in an old place, right? Yeah. So I'm constantly, you know, you, you notice little things. And it's funny because you get used to the little things. And I pray that if someone, if we ever move and someone moves in, yes. that, that the landlord and, and the folks go around and do a big thing with all of the little stuff that I've gotten used to yeah. or figured out the fixes because... It's crazy. But it's one of those, isn't it? You just need to keep an eye on things. Once yeah. you've moved in and you know your house, yeah. it's just a question of keeping an eye on things. Um, and if you don't want to keep an eye on things, that's really where an annual contract comes in. Yeah. You know, Then it makes sense. If you don't want that involvement, let somebody else do it for you and what, they'll do it well. What did you do with your bird uh, dis- deterrent? Did you leave those up on Left your own place? Yeah. 
left them. You don't believe this. I finally got all my deposit back. <laughs> really? Yes. I couldn't believe it. I mean, the threats I had to go through to get it was quite something. I literally made him think I was an absolute psycho. <laughs> I will chase you down. Well, yeah. Oh, all that and more. Uh, but in the end, he was desperate to get the cash back to me. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, the reason something. I bring up birds is I, I, I had this nice cactus that I thought was dying. And it was in a pot and I took it out of the pot and put it in the ground. And suddenly this, this giant cactus is thriving a little bit. Crikey. And then it, it started growing and it's regrowing. And then the birds attacked it because they're so happy to get it at this cactus, which I guess. Of course. So, yeah. so in the process of having masks made, there was a lot of leftover material. So now I've decorated my cactus with leftover mask material seems to deter them. And it looks kind of funky in the yard. My wife thinks we look like a bunch of, you know, hobos, but it's brilliant. I've always, I've aspired to hobo. <laughs> but it's all this fun, you know, colored material hanging off the plant and it's just birds don't seem to go near it. That's phenomenal. And of course the dog that they don't want to dare be on, on the ground either. Cause my dog tries to jump into trees. He can jump five feet. That's amazing. You know, well, he's already four. And so he jumps up another two feet. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's trimming my trees for me. He's like a camel. Oddly <laughs> enough, we had a similar situation with Rello. We didn't think he could jump. And then we left something on a table outside <laughs> and he didn't really jump. <laughs> He just arrived without any effort whatsoever at table height. And we're like, well, if that was what he's just done with the table, how high could he actually go? But he obviously needs to be quite motivated to do it. It's unlike yours, who, who sounds like he'll do it on a whip. Yeah, well, he, he, no, he doesn't go for the table. He doesn't go for food. Okay. Only when he first got him did he take a pie off the counter, but nothing since. Wow. Nothing since. Rella's just nailed um, <laughs> Ruby's breakfast this morning. <laughs> no, no. Boiled egg that she literally just looked Gone. the other way. <laughs> Done. <gasps> he's naughty. <laughs> Lucky he's cute. Gets her a blue head of that. There, there, was, there was a video of, of a, a lab and uh, ladies, you know, clearly this lab eats all the food off the counter. And uh, so Tupperware containers at the back of the counter. The dog is up and he's, he's got his paw out and he's, he's pulling it. Yeah, yeah. He's got the Tupperware in his mouth, Brilliant. but she's filming him and she's going, really, really? And you can see he takes one look at the owner. And he's like, oh, busted, <laughs> drops it. He goes, what are you going to do with it now? And he's, but he's, he's thinking, well, I got it. Can I have it? <laughs> and all you hear is the owner going, really? Now I can't even leave stuff on the counter at the back in a container. And I'm just going, I want to see more of the videos. <laughs> That was brilliant. <laughs> the other, the other dog one actually is lab as well. You must have seen it. Is the the dog that loves leaves? Have you seen the the, the, the video no. where basically it doesn't matter where this dog is, if it seals a sees a pile of leaves, it jumps full tilt straight in the middle of them. I absolutely love that one. They've got all of this filming from over the years of the dog just nailing all of these leaf piles. It's wonderful. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah absolutely fantastic. Which which is why you have to have a good fence to keep your dog in. And People yes. out. Yeah. Oh. Aluminium. Yeah. Aluminium. <laughs> you know what, Colin? I'm thinking, I think we're going to have to uh, think about wrapping things up. And we'll, we'll do it all again really soon. What a great list. we got more to go through. Plenty. And of course, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking i got to post up some of our back shows as well. Good idea. And I think it'll be kind of fun. And that doesn't mean to stop listening. Just oh. keep listening and enjoying. I was young in those days. <laughs> Well, and, and hey, Dan's on a lot of these too. So we've yeah. got some nostalgia shows. That's nostalgia. <laughs> Potaholics with a K at gmail.com. Potaholics with a K across all the socials. You want to get in touch with the folks over at We Will Fix It or Essential Maintenance Dubai. We Will Fix It. Essential Maintenance Dubai. Easy. Google it. You'll find them. And we, we do this every week or so. Rove Hotel helps us out. We do it in the podcast studio. Look forward to talking to you again really soon. You've been listening to the We Will Fix It show.